us and, and the collaboration we're going to have going forward. No better way to communicate to your audience. How do we grow strategically now that we've gotten the right path forward? <laughs> hey guys, we're doing a live presentation today. It's Todd Schroth here with Lawrence Heisler, our mortgage lender. Um, appreciate you tuning in today on a Friday. I wanted to spend, and, and this is in person, so this is a little bit unique. So we're looking at different cameras and things. Um, but I appreciate you tuning in, Agents Who Win. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe us. Subscribe to us on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, LinkedIn. You're going to see the show. And also now on podcast. So check us out on there as well. And I think we're on all the podcast channels. And don't ask me which ones they are because I have no idea. Um, but <laughs> find Agents Who Win on there. And you guys can hear these recordings later in the future. So our goal today is to talk about what realtors need to know in the mortgage markets. Because the things are changing every day. You know, this week, the rate, the, um, the feds raised the rates, you know, three quarters of a point. Some people yeah. freak out about it. Some don't, um, you know, want to educate the realtor population on, on what to know about, you know, the interest rates and how to educate their buyers. You know, and I'm just going to give you a quick answer. and I'll let you do your intro uh, or a quick um, statement and then I'll do the in, do um, another introduction. But uh, on the radio this morning, they had one of the guys from Certified Mortgage Planners said, yes, the rates are all over the place. But if you're a buyer, you need to buy now because the rates are just continuing to go up. And ironically, I'm working with the um, producer inside the studio. So I sent the DJ and the, the the producer a message. I said, see, it's still a good time to buy. And so they loved the message, but it was good to see some reaffirmation from someone of their guests making that same statement. Lawrence, I appreciate you being here today. And yeah. my long intro is done. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks, Todd. Well, um, you know, I'll just tell you this. So uh, if you're a football fan, you'll remember the year that um, Aaron Rodgers started off 0-3. And uh, the press, you know, they're having a big press conference and they're like, you know, oh, you must be panicking. You must be panicking. And, uh, you know, the, the big thing that he came back with was relax. Right. And and I think that's what we all need to do right now. Like, of course, we've seen some crazy things happen this year. But what are we comparing it to? Right. right. Like we're comparing it to the lowest all time interest rates that we've ever had in the history of mortgages, like 50 years of mortgages. So where are we at today versus where we've been in the past? I mean, if we really want to look at the, the big picture, the rates are still really good compared to where they were let's say back in the, the mid eighties or even the nineties. Like, you know, I always tell everybody, if you think the rates are high now, go ask your dad or your grandfather yeah. what their rate was when they bought a house. So I, you know, I think we're, I think we're, we, we need to put it into perspective right now. Yeah. And it's like, how do we have the conversation with the buyers to calm down and it's still a good time to buy because when, you know, we can go and show what history's done and people don't care about history. They care about what happened last week or, you know, six months ago when rates were three and a half percent. Because, you know, for example, in 2019, uh, no, 2018, we bought an investment property. Our rate was 5.5%. And, mm -hmm. and we sold it in 2019. Now, we recently just bought a second house. My rate's 35 and, and I was asking you the other day, like, what would my rate be if I bought that house today? And you're like, probably 7.5. Mm -hmm. Because it's too, I mean, they're just hitting the investors or the second homeowners. And so it's, uh, you know, how do we have those conversations with the investors? How do we have them with the homeowners? And we're not in the mortgage industry. That's why we have you. That's your specialty. But the the agents, or not the agents, the, the buyers still rely on us for, for information. Sure. And they have some sort of half-assed version of what's the truth right. and what's going to happen out there. Well, you know, one of the sayings that we like to say right now is that you marry the house yeah. and you date the rate. Yeah. Okay. So getting into the house now, I mean, again, let's look at real estate values historically. And, and they always go up. I mean, there's no question that the market over time is always going to go up. Are there peaks and valleys? Of course there are. But real estate is probably one of the safest investments that you'll ever make. So if you don't buy now, then you're risking next year, you know, waiting on the rates to go down. You're, you're, you're risking that the values continue to go up. Yeah. Um, the interest rate is something that if it's if you get the opportunity and, and, and we strongly believe this opportunity will take place in the next couple of years. Rates will come back down. Yeah. And, and so we lower that rate and you lower your payment. So if you can qualify to get the house now, I still think it's a better uh, uh, opportunity than if you wait for wait for the rates to go down. So you use the term, marry, date the rate, marry the house. 
I've used it. You're dating your landlord. And how long do you one like your landlord that you want to date him or her or them, you know, pronoun for a corporation? Um, do you love your corporation, that corporation that much? Or do you want to marry the house? And if you look at how often people have refinanced their homes over the last 10 or 15 years when I'm pulling listings and I'm trying to figure out what they owe, I'm like one, two, three, four times they refinance over a 15 year period for whatever reason. It's a cash out. It's, you know, it's, it's something, but luckily the values continue to go up. Even if they go back down, they can refinance or, you know, you stay in the, the mortgage a little bit longer. Um, but if the payments are, are comfortable, that's why you got to buy on payment, I right. think is the biggest thing. What can I afford? I don't need to spend 5,000 a month if I can afford it, but where's my payment that I want to be? And what kind of cash do I have for down payment? So, you know, this being this is targeted at agents to help educate on the mortgage side. When they're looking for a mortgage partner to get advice from, um, what should they be looking for in a mortgage person? And, um, you know, is it, do they go with the rocket mortgage type people or do they go with someone that's local in house um, in their area? And what are they pull, trying, like, how often should they hear from them about rates? Should we be concerned what rates are doing on a daily basis? Because I know I call you and you're like, I don't know, I haven't looked because it's like I'm not trying to be stressed out wondering what's happening every day. Right. And that's yeah. a lot of questions in, in yeah. one comment. Well, let's let's uh, let's answer the softball question okay. first. Um, what I love about when rates do go up is that the true professionals in this industry that have been around for a long time are able to pull out our toolbox and start using those tools. Yeah. Right. And and what I mean by that is we we're 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 advising clients uh, from a uh, um, from a, a, um, a, a figures um, we're looking at the um, tax breaks of buying a house um, we're digging in and we haven't had to use these tools nobody has for years right I mean you got a lot of rate quoters out there and that's what rocket mortgage is oh this is the rate we can give you right yeah um, but when I sit down with a client I'm gonna look to see what their situation is now and what their situation that they're getting into is and let's see if it makes sense financially for them. So for instance, mortgage interest is a huge tax write-off. So are real estate taxes. Some people don't even know this. I've talked to people that get the 1098 form every year and they don't even apply it to their taxes. Right. So they literally could be losing thousands of dollars or paying thousands of dollars more in taxes than they should be. And People don't know this. So when you're looking or you're you're talking to a client, for instance, that's renting right now, let's say the rent's $1,500 a month and the mortgage is going to be $2,000 a month. They might look at that and go, oh my God, that's a too high of a, a, an increase. But when you show them what the tax benefit is of buying the house, it actually brings that $2,000 probably down in a lot of cases below what they're paying in rent right now. Yeah. So I think that's the important thing of working with a mortgage professional, somebody who's been around for a long time that can really dive into the numbers with the clients and show them financially whether it makes sense for them or not. And when the agents are doing that, should they be in the room with the, the lender when they're talking to the buyers? so they can help understand the scenario? Or should I just pass my clients over to you and hope that you're taking good care of them? I mean, I, I think it's a great idea either way, to be honest with you. Okay. You know, I love realtors that are hands-on. They come in, they sit, it, they, it makes sense. Um, you know, the only thing we got to look out is if the client, you know, if we're talking, you know, about their financial situation, some clients, you know, like to do that, you know, in, in private with us. Um, but either way, I think keeping the realtor involved as far as what our plan is, um, you know, what we're looking at, what we're discussing with the client is super important so that we're all on the same page. So um, kind of tying into that. So now I've, I got a phone call. Hey, it's Sally. I want to buy a house. What questions should I, you know, before the, the introduction to the lender, um, should I be asking my client just to see if they're even qualified? Like what's a good, what's some good leading questions I can ask them? Sure. Um, I mean, some of the obvious questions are always, do you have a job? Right? Do you have, <laughs> do you have a job? Uh, what, what's your credit like? Yeah. Um, and, and that's something, you know, we're going to dive into that with them. Of course, we're going to pull a credit report, but um, just getting an idea, sort of a profile of what they're looking at. Do they have any money to put down? Um, who's going to be moving into the house? Who, who, who's going to be qualifying on the loan? Um, those type of basic questions just gives us a good idea of what we're looking at. You know, my favorite calls are when a, uh, a realtor partner of mine refers a, a client over and says, hey, I've got a couple. They're moving down from Iowa. Um, they've already got a job lined up. Um, they're going to be selling their house in order to buy their new house. And um, 
they're ready to talk to you. They said their credit's great. So that, man, I'm ready for that one. So I, I just had a call with you the other day. It was about a client who's, you know, grand, or yeah, the son and daughter-in-law are moving, are moving in and grandma's going to sell that, or I said grandma because she's taking care of the granddaughter. Um, mom is going to move into the in-law suite. They're going to use the, sell the house that they've got and use their collateral to buy the next property. And so I'm talking to them and asking them these questions. And they're like, as I'm asking the questions, like, and that's why we called you because it's, you're building strategy and I can work out scenarios and give them ideas. Now, again, the more you have these conversations with clients, I think the more you're going to learn. And if I can get family scenarios all day long, I can learn a lot of, about this business because it's sure. just street smarts. Yeah. And a lot of times, I mean, look, everybody's situation is different, right? Like, I mean, literally everyone is different. Um, and one of the things that we learned with the market this year, especially back in the beginning of the year when it was so tight, you know, it was tough as a buyer, was we looked for ways to cut out any contingencies. Yeah. Right. So so like if if somebody was going to sell their house to buy another house, um, what if they could buy a house without having to sell their yeah. house? E even though that might not be the perfect scenario. But in a lot of cases, we were able to set up the mortgage the way that they would have set it up if they had sold their house and maybe do like what's called a piggyback loan with a first and a small second. And when they do sell their house, all they got to do is sell that is pay off that second. And the first mortgage is exactly the mortgage that they would have wanted in the first yeah. place. So just, you know, being able to look for those creative ways to be able to get people. And, and those are great discussions to have with clients because clients don't know. A lot of times they just come and they want to know what the rate is. Yeah. And, and at the end of the day, at the end of the conversation, they realize how much more to our business and what we do with clients on the financial side is way more than what the rate is. Yeah. And, and, and I think it's a lot of, a lot of it comes down to education because with this couple that I'm talking about, you know, grand, her mom is on social security. She's got 350,000 in equity in her house. Uh, kids are just getting married, getting their first jobs, doing well. Um, we started talking about hometown heroes for a minute and they're like, yeah, I'm a volleyball coach at the high school and I'm a baseball coach at the high school. And I'm like, Oh, awesome. I'm like, but I volunteer. I'm like, well, that's not going to work. <laughs> yeah. So, but we're digging in, we're understanding, yeah. um, you know, what, what they're doing. And so what's your nine, to, what's your nine to five? Well, I'm a waitress. I do well. Um, I make more money than I would in my regular, if I got a job in my career that I paid a hundred thousand dollars in education for. Right. Um, and then the other one is working a nine to five doing well. So it's like, how do we structure mom's down payment? How do we structure his nine to five? Do we all three of them go on the loan? So we had all that conversation and I said, half of what I'm talking to you is probably 80% correct, but that's why we got to sit and have you talk to Lawrence to understand how we can put this whole thing together. Yeah. And this is so important to be all done on the front end. Yeah. Right. So again, let's go back to Rocket. Rocket, you can actually fill out an application online and in five minutes they send you a pre-approval letter. Yeah. Now guess what they haven't done? They haven't verified any of your income. They haven't verified any of your assets. They haven't verified if your money's been seasoned, how long you've been at your current job for. None of that has been has been reviewed and documented. And so that pre-approval letter is, is not even worth the paper that it's written right. on. So we go through and we get all that knocked out up front. So when we when we send a pre-approval letter to our realtors, they know there's no question that they qualify for whatever that price is that we got them pre-approved for. And that's important today. So you mean I, I, I meet a buyer at open house on Sunday and I send them your link to to get approved real quick. And that quick letter that you send me is, is really not as valid it's to put the offer in right there within an hour to know these people are legit. You know, that offers that letter is not truly valid because you haven't had the time to understand their scenario, pull their credit, understand the credit, um, you know, check the job and make sure all this stuff is truly verifiable. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now, don't get me wrong. We can do this all in an hour. Like, we yeah, literally pre approved clients in an hour. Yeah. We just need them to send some paperwork. And then once we get that paperwork, you need paperwork. Yeah, we need paperwork <laughs> still. And once we get it, we can verify what they what they make and where their money is coming from. Then we're we're off and running. We will get them back to you, ready to shop. So when we're getting letters from like other lenders, I and mean, this is more of a qualification of lenders for our offers coming in, um, kind of changing the 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 avenue here. What is some questions we should be asking as agents to the lenders when we're receiving their offers? Because we're not just qualifying the customer, we're also qualifying the lender because we want to know that it's going to close. So how I would qualify Rocket Mortgages, am I going to talk to the same person through the whole process? No, it's going to get bounced around. Have you pulled anything? No, we haven't done any work yet, but they're approved. We know they're, you know, we know they're good to go. 
Yeah. You know, so what are some questions we should be asking you if we receive a lender letter from you? Yeah, absolutely. So I, I think I think uh, just asking a basic profile of the client. Hey, how's their credit look? How much are they putting down? How quickly can you close? Um, do you see any potential issues coming up with this? What are some things that I need to be aware of as as their agent? Um, and these are the conversations I have not only with the, the buyer's agent, but also with the listing agent as well. Yeah. Um, I call the listing agent when, when my buyers are ready to make an offer and I know they're getting ready to make an offer. I will reach out to the listing agent and make sure they know everything that we just, we just talked about. Yeah. Um, and, and I think that's, that's what every agent should be doing as well. Asking those questions, getting a good feel for how these clients are and what kind of, what kind of expectations we have with closing on them. I mean, you got to think we're going into a relationship and the relationship's going to run 30 to 60 days. Mm -hmm. And it's not just a relationship with the other agent. It's a relationship with the buyers, with the sellers. You know, it's a longer relationship with the sellers because now you're, you're, you've hit that finish line and you know, the relationship with the lender and his team, his or her team and a relationship with the title. How are all those people going to marry together and make this, bring this thing to fruition? You know, we've got some title companies work that are complete nightmares, lenders that are complete nightmares. We see their names. We're like, do they want to talk with anybody else? And they're like, no, they're married to Rocket Mortgage. Like, you know, God help us. Yeah. Um, I just was on the phone earlier about a certain inspection company that um, has been a complete nightmare on everything they ever touch. Yeah. And the standard response from agents is, um, I would have them inspect the house I'm buying all day long because I know it's going to help me negotiate but I would never use them on a buyer's contract. Right. And he said this exact same thing to me. He goes, oh, I wanted them on this house that I'm buying. And it's an agent buying the property and, um, but I would never use them on a buyer. I'm like, so you're playing the same game, <laughs> you know? And, you know, and I, cause when I see the name come across, we think falling apart, I think it's, it's gonna be a nightmare to work with. We see the same thing with lenders and title companies as well. Yeah. And it's like, we want to know who we're working with because we're going to be in a relationship together. So I pre I love that you call the listing agents and, and you're kind of like doing your introduction. Yeah. We're going to be dating for 30 days. Yeah. This is what our dating is going to look like. Yeah, exactly. And not to use the date, the rate, marry the house, you know, <laughs> analogy, but it's, it, it is true what it is. Well, I think one of the mistakes that a lot of agents make is they're not firm enough with who their clients are using for their financing. Yeah. And the best agents that I work with, the top agents, they tell their clients, I want you to at least have a conversation with yeah. my lender. And at the end of that conversation, if they still don't feel like like us or whoever that lender is, is the best choice for them, well, at least they've had that, that conversation. Now, I do have some agents that won't work with clients unless they work with us. Yeah. Um, and it's just because they're looking out for the best interest of the client. The client might think they know what's best for them, but you guys are the professionals and you know what's best for your clients. And, and the ones that take that authoritative stance with their clients end up having a much better transaction than the ones that go, oh, OK, you're with, uh, you know, the bank or you're with Rocket Mortgage. OK, sounds good. Let's get this going. Right. And they're the ones that have, uh, you know, the, as we say, the rocket explodes about yeah. halfway through the transaction. And, uh, and, and, you know, it's a, it's a horrible experience for everybody. So when I get that call and I'm, I'm dealing with that client, so on my way home, I'm going to stop at ABC liquor and buy my monthly supply of the Jack Daniels. No one would buy a bigger bottle that month. And I don't drink Jack Daniels every month and I don't have a monthly supply of it just for those listening. But you know, you have the per transaction bottle that I need to buy a bigger one <laughs> because this one is going to be a nightmare if I, if I don't force it and you can't force the clients, but if I don't put authoritative, into the conversation about why you need to work with him yeah. or work with her and not the online, you know, type lender. Yeah. Um, so I think it's good to reassure why working with the local in-house. Um, I always, I always call it why I want to work with an in-house lender, because if there's an issue, I know where the corporate office is. It's three miles from my office. I can go down and knock down the writer up if I need to and punch them out. If there's an issue that they're not responding and they are closing late, if I got to get a, get on a rocket to go to wherever they're at, um, that's going to be an issue. Yeah. Um, I want people who know the local markets who have, you know, um, people in the business that are in the community and that helps us out. I mean, I guarantee you, if you were to, to take a survey of listing agents in, in the central Florida area and ask them, uh, would you, would you accept <laughs> a pre-approval letter from a rocket mortgage B let's put, throw in any of the banks in there or C the mortgage firm about 95% would say, I'll take the mortgage for yeah. only because we've been here for 30 years. 
we we are planted in this community. We stand behind our products, um, uh, and 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 we take that extra effort to 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 assure that client really truly is pre-approved, and and that that makes a big huge difference. Yeah, sure. oh, and it does, and that's you guys have a long term reputation around here, and there's a, a lot of like you know you know pop up mortgage companies that happened in the last few years, and I was on the phone with a um, uh, one of our agents earlier, you know. People all the time find mortgage lenders who are like, they found me on Instagram. They found me here. I love working with them because we went to a party together. Like, that's not how the business is built. Business is built in transactions and relationships. And in five minutes, I can tell if you're a brand new, brand new lender or not. And if you're a brand new lender, that's great because we all started somewhere. But I need you to be working with a Lawrence or someone like that, giving the education. Right. And because I know you have a team and right. as, as do I. And when um, our lender, when our agents are submitting offers, I say, please copy me on the email. So if I know the agent, I can call that agent to kind of put some reassurance behind working with you and our team. Mm -hmm. And if I don't know them, we'll try to have a conversation. Some, you know, if they answer the phone or want to communicate, great. But it's, we want to make that extra step. And I know you do the same thing with your team. If the, if they see something going through and you know, and, and it's coming from Darlene to me, you see that it's going to Todd. Well, I'm going to call Todd and just say, "Hey, you know, Darlene's an awesome, you know, lender to work with, right. um, because they've got my backing, right. and you know, 20 something years of lending experience going on." Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, that's exactly how my team works. I mean, we have daily team meetings, so everybody knows. You know, I'm going to look over everything. Yeah. Um, but at the end of the day, the team allows us to have more bandwidth and to be able to communicate better. And we know how important communication is in our business. Yeah. Um, we reach out to our realtors every week and we update them on the status of the loan. Even if nothing's happened, we just want to reach out to you and say, hey, everything's going good. We look good for closing. Um, we're averaging clear to closes over 10 days before <laughs> closing. So the team's what allows me to do that, yeah. right? These onesie twosie guys, I used to be one of those. I mean, there's a reason why they run everything to the wire, right? They're busy. They could be the great loan officers, but if they don't have the team behind them to help push things, then they're always going to have those last minute, you know, rush closings. Yeah. Well, I think the onesie twosies, like when we're pushing all the way to the last minute, it's because I'm only doing one or two loans a month. And if I want to get, and I want to scale, I need to get into a team or be, or start a team to be able to scale and be able to close more because I can make a lot more money. And it's going to be a lot smoother process. Yeah, I think. Yeah. I and, and, you know, I go back to the relationship. I think it's everything. I think every realtor that's watching the show um, should have a really good professional loan officer that they do the bulk of their work with. And, you know, I'll tell you, not every lender offers the same thing. So, you know, I, there sometimes it might be better to have somebody else that's stronger if you're dealing with, let's say, a lot of foreign national loans. Yeah. Um, find out what your loan officer what their strengths are and what their niches are. Um, but when you find somebody that's really good and they stand behind what they do, then I think that's the perfect time. Uh, that's a perfect um, relationship. And one of the things that I always do is I make sure that I edify my agents with the clients. I create, I, I help with that triangle of trust because believe it or not, clients get unhappy with realtors in really? the process. <laughs> yeah, it happens. And uh, a lot of times they'll come to us and they'll say, yeah, I don't know, man. I'm I'm seeing all this stuff on Zillow, and my realtor's not showing it to me. You know, I, I I'm thinking I need to go a different direction, and that's where we can step in and save the deal for our realtors. Um, we take pride in doing that. It's important to us uh, to make sure that we educate them because we know that that's not the case. We know that those listings are looking at on Zillow probably sold six months ago. So, um, so that's, that's an important, uh, I think an important characteristic to have in the loan officer you're working with. So let's, as we're wrapping up, what are some ways that we can do a better job introducing you and edifying you to our clients? Yeah, that's a great question. So I love, um, the, the best is the, the live call. Okay. So like you're on the call with a client you go, Hey, let me call Lawrence and I literally three way call me in. Or um, the email introduction is great as well. Anything that ties the three of us in together, I think, is the best introduction. The thing not to do is to tell your client, hey, this is my lender. I want you to give them a call. Yeah. Because we, we find about 35% of them end up actually calling. Yeah. Um, Where do you see them end up going? Online or... Yeah, wherever. Okay. Or 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 they just they're not serious buyers. At least we're gonna find out, right? Yeah. Like we're we're a, a layer of 
protection or a layer of investigation with you guys, yep. right? So you get a client and they're like, yeah, you know, we're thinking about buying. And you're like, oh, great. We need you to talk to our lender. Let's get you pre-approved and out there shopping. Well, if we call them five times and they don't ever call us back, maybe they weren't really serious about yeah. buying. Well, now right? we're just out playing house, you know, door opener for somebody who's actually not going to be buying a house. Yeah. And, and a lot of times we find out that it's just that maybe there was a fear that they had. Yeah. Maybe they didn't think they could buy. Like a lot of people think they have to have 20% saved saved up. Yeah. We saw a recent survey that over 60% of first time home buyers thought they have to have 20% saved up to buy That's a home. crazy. Because if they hard, I mean, it's, for me, it's hard to save 10% or 5%. I mean, we have the money to, to buy, but if you're trying to buy a property, I'd rather get in now with 3% down than I would with 20. Yeah. Because as I'm waiting for the, to save my 20%, what's happening in the market is going up 20%. Yeah. And now we need to save that much more money. Yeah. So that, that initial conversation is everything. That, yeah. that, that allows us to determine how serious they are. And then it, we, we can alleviate some of those fears. And then we can get them on the application and out, out shopping with you guys. So going into the home buying journey, um, I meet a buyer. What, how You know, we want to get them approved right away. But what's the earliest that they should apply for a mortgage? Because like I was talking to my team the other day about, you know, you're getting buyers and they say, we're three to six months out. Great. So are you three or six months out? You know, what is putting you out that far? Is it a lease? What's the scenario? Let's say that the lease is going to be up in six months. When should they talk to you? And, you know, for someone who's six months out from buying, I'm probably going to just put them on an uh, email drip with, with follow-up as far as houses that are out there. Mm -hmm. Start looking more seriously in three months. Um, when should we get the, get you involved? Yeah, that's a really good question. And it depends because... A lot of clients might think they're in a good position to buy, um, but maybe they haven't had their credit even checked or they don't monitor their credit. Yeah. And they, they believe their credit's good, but when we pull it, come to find out something had gone to collection um, and, and we could have maybe gotten it taken care of if we had looked at it ahead of time. Yeah. So I like to have at least that conversation with them and try to dig into things like that. If a client isn't going to buy for six months out, then maybe we don't pull credit. Maybe we just get them on, let's say, Credit Karma, so at least they can see where their scores, get an idea where their right. scores are. Um, outside of that, four months is our general window of a pre-approval, and we want to close in that four-month period. So if they're, let's say, three months out, then, then I would say it's time to get the process started. Let us take a look. The sooner, the better, so that we can expose any potential issues and still be able to address and fix those prior to their wanting to buy a house. Thing. Okay. So buyers have, you know, they're, they're four months out. You know, I know you guys, uh, when we were buying ours, hey, if you pay off this credit card or pay it down by X thousands of dollars, then it's going to raise your score. You know, we'll do a rapid rescore and raise it 20 points. We're going to get your quarter point off. And that's why I was telling the agents, like, you should, if they're six months out, have that conversation with the lender. Because what happened is we went, you know, our score went up 20 points, but it also dropped my credit a quarter point. Not my credit, but dropped my interest rate a quarter point, which then for a 30-year mortgage, that's a lot of money over time. Sure. So it's learning those things that the buyers, could, like the tricks the buyers can do to save money to kind of push things forward. Yeah. And when we pull credit, we have a built-in um, potential score improvement model. Okay. So we automatically run that. So if we see a client, let's say they're at a 640 credit score, but it shows that there's 40 points of improvement, we can get them to 680. Yeah. That jump from 640 to 680 could be, like you said, a yeah. quarter, sometimes a half a point yeah. on the rate. And, and sometimes it's really easy things. Their credit card has just got a little too high of a balance. So we can have them pay the balance down, or in some cases, it's a simple call to their uh, credit company um, to have their their credit uh, uh, limit. <laughs> how, to, how to play the system? Yeah. So those types of advices that we can give clients early on can make a huge difference um, when it comes time to you know interest rates and all. So, um, kind of final thoughts here. What do you see the mortgage markets doing over the over the next uh, six months, going into the first quarter of next year? Well, I think it all depends on what happens with. Um, uh, the inflation in okay. the U.S. Um, what we're hearing, and, and now keep in mind, when the Feds raise the rates, it doesn't mean that our rates necessarily go up. We're looking more at what the Feds are anticipating to happen in the future. Um, after yesterday's report, uh, we did find out that they are anticipating to raise rates more than what they initially were projecting to raise. Yeah. So we're going to see a slight adjustment up on the rates. Um, it's going to bump back and forth. We need some good economic news. We need we need for the economy to start um, the inflation to start settling down a little bit, and and for the Feds to start easing on those increases. 
Um, they're saying by the end of this year, we'll, we'll probably see that. So I think the forecast going in to 2023 is we're going to see rates around where they're at right now, maybe dropping a little bit if we can get just a little tick of good economic yeah. news. And the um, so agents that are out there that want that are in the local markets or even Florida, um, what's the best way for them to get a hold of you? Yeah, so um, you can either uh, call me on my cell, which is 407-448-3303, um, or you can go to uh, theheislerteam.com. Our website will show you everything about the company, who we've got, our staff, um, and, it, and it has an online application for our clients there as well. Okay, so your name, last name is like mine. It's not easy to spell. Yeah. How do you spell Heisler Team? H-E-I-S-L-E-R. Okay. So it's theheislerteam.com. Perfect. So, Lawrence, I appreciate you being here today. Lawrence and I have been working together for many years. Our kids are in school together, so it's like a good partnership here. Um, if you guys need a referral on Lawrence, you're happy to just kind of give you our background. Um, and it, great you know, time today on the show, and I just really appreciate the information and really how to help educate the realtor partners out there to when they are vetting agents, or not agents, when they're vetting lenders, what to be asking. Yeah, Because everybody in the brother wants to be our best friend. I mean, we had somebody in here stopping yesterday from Teachers Credit Union. Never heard of him. The guy looked like he just rolled out of his car that didn't run. So it's also presentation, you know, yeah. uh, when you're walking into offices. Well, and the good news is it's going to be a lot less of us yeah. with these rates increasing. So Really? And agents. Thank yeah. God. <laughs> exactly. Back to the professionals. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> so, guys, appreciate you watching the show today. Uh, tune in next week. we got some good stuff happening. Enjoy. Have a great weekend.